like, we're using floating lines here in the shallow bay for obvious reasons, but what are some of the other lines you like to use in other situations you'd use them? One of the other lines I like to use, Phil, is a traditional sink line. And with that line, uh, instead of the uniform where the entire line sinks, it, uh, it forms a belly in it, like a U shape. And uh, that'll pull the boatman or the back swimmer down, and it'll come down in a U shape. And uh, it'll rise back up again, just as the, uh, the real boatmen and back swimmers do when they're, when they're under the surface. So I was just doing the very slow, long strip and the long pause, and he took it on the pause. And we're just going to try to get him on the reel here. He wants to go right now. Looks like another beautiful Muir Lake rainbow. It's quite the fishery you've got here, Mike. Your clients must love it. Boy, you just don't want to give up, do you? And with the colors that we're seeing on these, Phil, is uh, you'd think that they were into their spring spawn. But it is a sort of a dark, weedy environment, and I think that's just what they need to survive. Or you get the white pelicans here, a couple of loons. Is a, I've seen ospreys here before, so just their way of taking care of themselves. Oh, beautiful fish. Thick. What a healthy rainbow bike. Holy smokes. And look at the thickness of that rainbow. That's the price for those weeds, just full of food. Okay, relax. Great Muir Lake Rainbow. Hey, we've got fish on here, and that was simply I'd made my cast and I was letting the fly sink, and the fish took it on the drop, which would suggest the natural downward path of a boatman or a back swimmer. You gotta remember, these are air breathing insects, so they're constantly making trips from the bottom to the surface to replenish their oxygen supply. They trap a little bubble of air along their bottom and along their body rather, along the bottom of their body, and they use that to survive underwater. So they're really prisoners of the shallows, and at this time of the year, they're very active. And this is a good looking fish, so I'm gonna get it, keep tension on the fish, and clear the decks here. So if this fish makes a sudden run, I don't run the risk, hopefully, of losing it, because my fly line catches around my foot, or an anchor peg or, or something like that. So we'll just keep the tension on. And now I'm gonna put the rod position low and let that fish run. See how my rod tips high when that fish runs? And the second he stops running, he's running left, I give him right side pressure. If he's running right, I give him left side pressure and I get the full bend of the rod into the fish and I can defeat him quickly. And this is, uh, feels like a good fish. We're still not sure what fly he took, and that's part of the fun of fishing droppers. Well, he's got some weeds on. Oh, that's a nice quality Muir Lake fish here. Oh, a beautiful specimen. Well, this is a gorgeous fish. Beautiful condition. This is what we came here for. It's hard to believe we're only 35 minutes, 40 minutes from downtown Edmonton. So I'm just going to get the fly in here. I'm going to take the fly out, and I'll show it to you at home. What a quality fish we've got here, right here in Edmonton. And he took, he took the little dropper fly, which is a little size 16 crystal boatman pattern. So we'll just throw all that out of the way, wet my hands, and this fish is full of energy. That. <laughs> was a gorgeous Muir Lake fish. Hopefully you got a glimpse of that. But we'll get some more. They're starting to come on, and we're starting to see some action. Could be a great afternoon. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Now we're putting up brand new videos all the time. So if you want to be notified when a new one goes up, click that bell icon and it'll come to you as soon as it's uploaded.